no matter which edition of Visio 2010 you have, you can use the database wizard to link shapes to actual records of data that exist in your data sources. And not only can you bring this data into your shape data fields from the data source, but you can actually change the data inside of Visio and write that back out to the data. So you can actually use Visio as a data editing tool as well. So the first thing we got to do is have some data. So I've got our light bulb data here in Microsoft Excel, and we've seen this in the book and uh, typical light bulb information. You got model or manufacturer here. We've got the type of bulb. We've got halogen incandescence, LEDs, compact fluorescence. We've got some power or wattage ratings for each bulb. And then over here on the left, I've created a, a unique ID that gives us a hint as to what we're getting. The manufacturer, the model, and the power is all in this unique ID. So I'm going to show you how to set up the data source in a little bit different way than I talk about in the book. And I'll start by going to Control Panel. And up in the search here in Windows 7, you can type in something like data. I'll type in data to reduce the possibilities. And what I want right here is the Administrative Tools Setup Data Sources ODBC. ODBC is a little bit older, but the database wizard works with that type of a uh, data source. So let's just click on that. And up pops the Data Source Administrator dialog for ODBC data sources. And I'm going to just add one. And I want to add one that responds to that is, uses the Microsoft Excel driver. We'll say finish. And Visio will say what's the data source name? So I'll say light bulb data for the DB Wiz wizard. And we will select a workbook. I believe I have the path saved here. I'll just paste that in, hit return. There's my Excel worksheet. I'll select that. And one last thing I want to do is expand this op options bit right here and make sure I uncheck real only. And this will allow us to write data back to the data source when we change it inside of Visio. So we'll just hit OK and OK, and we've created the data source. Now, that's essentially the same thing you do from within the database wizard, but it's interesting to know that you can do it outside of Visio in the control panel. So let's go over to Visio and see, see what we've got here. I've got a drawing, pretty much a blank drawing, and it has one light bulb master in the document stencil. If we drag it out, you can see it's got fields that make sense for the light bulb. We've got power, model, bulb type, surveyed, and ID. I'm showing the text in the shape, so you can see if I type, uh, pick a bulb type, that actually is reflected in the text of the shape. And one other thing I've done, which I talk about in detail in the book, is I've changed the the row names for the uh, each shape data field. So if I show the shape sheet, I've just right clicked on the shape here. If I show the shape sheet, you can see that not only are the labels for the shape data fields changed, but also the names. You remember that if you create a shape data field by default, you get this funny name so it says row six and when you use the shape data dialog define shape data the label is what you normally enter and the row name is isn't edited but when you go to map fields in the database wizard you need to change the name as well because it's hard to map a meaningful field to something named row one or row two or row three or row four so just to show you that I've done that, we'll delete that. And what we're going to do is link this master to our data source now. So we'll go to the, the View tab on the ribbon, come over to Add-ons, go down to Visio Extras, and just barely on your screen, you'll see the database wizard about two thirds of the way down. So just click on that and launch it. So we'll click Next. And what we want to do is link shapes to database re records hit next and what we want to link are masters on a document stencil now this is the document stencil that belongs to this drawing so we want the second option here the shape that we want to modify is the light bulb shape it's the only shape available in the stencil and the only shape in this list 
and we'll continue on to choose a data source. So you can see light bulb data for the DB wizard is there. And we'll click, keep clicking next. There's quite a few steps in the database wizard. So just bear with me. So we have a, a defined region in the Excel spreadsheet, a named region called model type power. And I believe that, that is a, that's required for the for the database wizard. If we come back to Excel, you can see I've got a named cell called model type power, and it is <coughs> in fact this this region here. So we'll go back to Visio and continue on. We need to specify that there's some sort of unique identifier in the in, in the data source, and we've got one field which is the ID field. And this is where I specify that. Choose the primary key field for the database. It is the ID. And when you're going through these steps, you have to take a little bit more time to read them the first time, second time, third time through. But it starts to make sense after a while, and you can really rapidly go through the database wizard. So we could choose to have a default value or none at all. And I'll just say none so that we're forced to pick pick a value for each shape. And one good way to do that is to tell Visio to make me select a record when I drop the shape. And then there are various features you can add to the shape that appear in the right click action menu. And I'll just leave all four of these selected. And we'll see some of those later on in the video. The shape cell that is going to store the primary key should be prop.id because we don't want to overwrite any of these other prop cells. And again, right here, this is an example where if we hadn't renamed the the, the rows for the shape data fields, we would see prop.row1, prop.row2, prop.row3, prop.row4 here. So we had to do that slightly technical step of renaming the, the actual rows and, and not just the labels. So we'll hit next. And now we need to map our database fields, which are bulb type, model, and power. ID doesn't show because that's already mapped as the primary key for our data. And we've got shape sheet cells. So right away we're, we're talking about the shape sheet cells instead of shape data fields because there's you can actually link the angle or the width or the, the fill color of the shape to database fields as well. So the database wizard is a bit technical. As you can see, you need to understand what's going on behind the Visio shape to really use it well. But we've got prop bulb, prop .bulb type, so and then we've got our bulb type field, and we just hit add, and Visio creates uh, what you would call a mapping to, to link those two together. So similarly, prop.model, link to the model field, hit add. And this is really the key point where not having prop.row1, prop.row2, helps we wouldn't know which pr which row to map to which power so now we can since we renamed the rows we can see prop.power underscore watts should be mapped to power watts we hit add and now we've mapped all three data fields so let's continue on finish a little bit of a status screen pop pops up and we're good to go so now what happens when we drop the light bulb shape you can see this dialog pops up and says, choose one of the database records. And this is why I gave the, the ID or the key field something a little bit more easy to read. You can make it even longer that, so it said all of the data for the shape. But now I know that I can pick a GE compact fluorescent that's 13 watts or a GE LED that's 3 watts. So let's just pick the first item in the list just for fun. We can drag another one and pick something else if we want. And that's all great. So you also notice that if you right click the shape, there's a few custom actions that were added by the, the uh, database wizard. If I want to change this, the, uh, the actual piece of equipment that this shape is linked to, I can right click and say select database wizard and that dialog appears again. I can do a few other things that have to do with deleting and re refreshing and updating, but we won't, let's 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 do something else first before we go there. So we've got a fight halogen twenty watt bulb, and if you look at Excel, you can see that that is this row right here, row five, 
And back in Visio, what if we go to the shape data field for this model and we edit it? Now I'm just going to do something really obvious, like x, 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 and enter. Well, if I look at Excel, it still says fight. So it would be nice to be able to link, uh, update the, the data source. So if I right click and say update database record, watch what happens. When I go over to to Excel, it's actually updated to XXX. And I can actually change it in Excel and right click and refresh the shape properties and it's back to fight again. So the scenario that you might run into is having a few things out of out of sync. So now we've got four of these light bulbs and let's just change, say the we, we had misspelled the manufacturer's name so we edited it in this shape and you can see now they're all out of sync inside of Visio and this one's out of sync with the data source. When I push the change back to the database record, now Excel is synced up with this particular shape, but these three shapes are still out of sync. So I can right click on each one and say refresh shape properties, which means go to the database and, and get the new data. Or if I've got a lot of them, I don't even think I have to select them. I can go to view, add-ons, Visio extras, and you'll see there's lots of database items in here. And what I can do is do database refresh and Visio looks through the drawing and finds all the shapes that are linked to data sources using the database wizard and up updates them. So now we can go back to Excel, get rid of the triple X, come back into our drawing and do this refresh again, database, uh, refresh, and there we go. So now everything is in sync with the database again. One last thing you might want to do is if you if you're just toying around with the database wizard or do you decide you don't want to have the, the shapes linked anymore, you can go to the database wizard, start it up, go through the steps, pick masters on a document stencil, the light bulb shows up, and now Visio recognizes that we've actually linked the light bulb shape to the database wizard. So I can click remove links because this button is active now. I'll do that. Finish. And you'll know that's when I right click on shapes. All those special uh, actions are gone, the, the four items that we added before. And when I drop a new shape, no dialog appears. So that's how you use the database wizard to hook shapes to data sources and actually edit the data from within Visio or refresh the data in your drawing from data that might have changed outside. Lots of complicated and cool stuff there. So give it a whirl for yourself.